His driveway was stormed by a woman cursing him as she walked up. It didn't matter to her who was watching. Using the signboard as a weapon, she bashed it hard into the grass, making holes in the process. Others were watching her, but they were too scared to intervene. She was destroying the front yard of his house. Would someone stop her? On a sunny Saturday morning, Alan Bricks awoke to find a bright white for sale, sign in his front yard squinting at it. He wondered how such an error could have occurred. An arrow pointed towards the house next door on the for sale, sign in the man's front yard took him by surprise. Who was selling what? On the weekend, he wanted to sleep in, but was forced to get up and investigate. In his neighborhood, he followed the arrow on the sign, winding through the suburban streets. One house was crowded with people. Bewildered, he investigated, his curiosity overriding his morning sluggishness. Why were they all there? He was a 50-year-old former government officer with a penchant for order who was enjoying a serene Saturday morning in his suburban home in Houston, Texas. His new routine was taking some time to adjust to. When he stepped outside to grab the newspaper, he was surprised to hear a noise coming from down the street. A sense of bewilderment seized him, and he followed the arrow on the sign to find out what was going on. The houses passed in a blur as he strolled, increasing his curiosity. When he reached the house, there was a commotion. On the lawn, tables were set up, and people rummaged through furniture. One of Alan's neighbors, Karen Hicks, owned the property. She was surrounded by other people outside her house. Alan was enraged on the inside. Karen's audacity shocked him. Investigating this, he decided to discover who was behind it. Frustration gnawed at him as he scanned the neighborhood, wondering who had orchestrated this bizarre and infuriating incident. A yard sale was taking place in his complex without his knowledge. As Alan followed the arrow, he discovered the sign came from Karen Hicks' house. As he approached her front yard, he noticed an array of furniture displayed there. Karen's attention was caught when Alan cleared his throat. Karen, what's up with that moving sale sign in my yard? But Karen ignored him and continued talking to the customer. Following the arrow on the sign, he made his way angrily to the driveway of Karen Hicks, a neighbor. The woman was arranging her furniture on the lawn for a yard sale, a seemingly innocent activity. His face was etched with confusion as he approached her. What the heck is going on here? Why is there a for sale sign in my yard? Karen refused to respond. What was her issue? Alan was becoming angry. In a jog towards her, he shouted, Karen, what's that for sale sign doing in my front yard? He asked again. Unapologetically chewing gum, Karen looked up. Oh, hi, Alan. I'm moving, so I thought I'd have a yard sale. I didn't think you would mind that I used your yard for some extra exposure she said, continuing to set up her table. Almost pushing the customer aside, Alan stepped closer to Karen. There was no notification given to me, he said sternly. And this is a residential complex. A calm expression filled Karen's face as she arranged some knickknacks on the table. Oh, Alan, it's a yard sale. In preparation for moving, I thought it would be a good idea to get rid of some furniture. There's no harm in that, is there? Alan's eyes widened, and he furrowed his brows. The harm is that it's my front yard, Karen. And besides, you need permission from the HOE for something like this. Alan frowned. You can't just put a sign in my yard without asking. It's against the rules. You need to read the HOE regulations. But Karen wasn't paying attention to him, which only made the man angrier. With a smirk, Karen straightened up revealing a gleaming badge pinned to her shirt that read, HOE President. Guess what, Alan? I am the HOE President. I have every right to put that sign there. Alan was speechless. He had been back home for just two weeks now. He realized that he had missed out on the HOE communications while away at work. He had a lot of catching up to do. Alan's eyes widened in disbelief. You're the President? Since when? he asked, folding his arms across his chest. Since last month, Karen replied, crossing her arms defiantly. So if I say it's okay, it's okay. She waved her hand at him and walked away to another table. Was Alan going to take on the HOE president? 
Alan shook his head, a mixture of frustration and disbelief coursing through him. This is ridiculous. I won't let you violate the rules just because you're in charge. Undeterred, Karen argued back. Well, what are you going to do about it? She had just made a sale of one of her chairs and quickly pocketed the cash. Determined, Alan took the sign and marched to her front yard, forcefully placing it on Karen's lawn. I'm not letting this slide. Read the rules, Karen. The rude woman was in shock. She couldn't believe what Alan did. A few other neighbors who were nearby were watching and laughing at her. She felt embarrassed and quickly ran towards Alan. Karen immediately grabbed the sign and reprimanded Alan. Alan's jaw dropped. He had been living next to the HOE president and was completely oblivious. Karen continued, You should really read the rules and regulations before accusing your neighbors of wrongdoing. She warned him not to touch her sign again but was Alan ready to let it go? Alan could see that a few neighbors were staring at him. He didn't want to cause a scene on his street. Look, I don't understand why you can't put your sign on your lawn. He questioned her. A sly grin crossed Karen's face. Funny thing, Alan, I am the HOE president. I make the rules. She laughed as she held her sign up, directing new customers to her yard sale. Alan's eyes widened in disbelief. You can't just do whatever you want. That's an abuse of power. He stomped up and down her driveway shouting at her. But Karen was finished talking to him. She stared at him with a blank face which only made him more upset. Go read your HOI handbook. He shouted at her. The confrontation escalated as Alan argued with Karen about the proper procedures and the need for respecting neighbors. It's a Saturday morning and you're causing a disturbance. He repeated. Karen remained defiant, asserting her authority with every word. Frustrated, Alan hit the signboard she was holding. He walked away and tried to keep his cool. Karen the HOE president was not worth getting a warning from the HOE board. A red-faced Karen, furious at being challenged, glared at Alan. You'll regret this, Alan Bricks. She shook her fist angrily at him as he walked back to his house. A few of the neighbors were offended by the altercation and left. Karen was upset that her customers were leaving and tried to be extra friendly with them to stay. But they just smiled and left, they had already seen her true colors. Stunned, Alan mumbled an apology and retreated, leaving Karen to tend to her customers. Sorry people for the interruption, but that's my yard here, he said sternly. As he walked away, confusion turned to anger. He couldn't believe the HOE president would be so audacious. Should he be the one to report her to the board of directors? Alan shook his head and went back home, thinking the matter was resolved. He hated having to confront people. It was one of the reasons that he retired early from his job. As he walked back home, he was beginning to think that his resigning wasn't such a good idea. He was already regretting being back home and he wasn't even back for three weeks yet. Back home, Alan rifled through the HOE rules and regulations, confirming that Karen was indeed not within her rights. The rules clearly stated that residents should refrain from crossing the boundaries of other properties. Surely Karen knew this. As she said, she was making an exception for herself because she was the HOE president. Should he take her up on this matter? Alan was absorbed in the HOE rulebook when he noticed something strange outside his window. He thought he saw a figure running around his yard. However, as he peeked through his window, he noticed Karen smugly putting the sign back on his lawn. Anger bubbled within him. How dare she do such a sly thing after being warned? Frustration and disbelief welled up inside him. As he looked out the window, he noticed the for sale. Sign still firmly planted in his yard Karen was banging the rods in with a brick making sure they were deep in the ground. Alan watched as bits of grass and sand flew up as the rude HOE president forcefully placed her sign board back on Alan's front lawn. He was furious, this was the last straw. Fed up, Alan stormed out of his house, military instincts kicking in. He approached Karen with a determined stride, holding his gun visibly. Karen, I won't tolerate trespassers on my property. I'm an ex-military officer, and I'm not afraid to use this if I have to. He stood on his porch looking down at Karen with vengeance. Would she finally take a hint? 
Karen looked up, a sly smile playing on her lips. Oh, Alan, I'm moving, and I thought I'd sell some furniture. Don't worry, it's just temporary. She tried to calm him down, but he refused to obey her. Alan was adamant that she remove her board. She pleaded with him to let her keep it there just for a few more hours. But Alan rejected her, he was not in a helpful mood. Alan furrowed his brow. Karen, you should know better. We have HOE rules and regulations. You can't just put a sign in someone else's yard without permission. He took his copy of the rule book and threw it at her. Here, for your perusal, I think you skipped the chapter on being a decent person, he said with a laugh. A heated argument ensued as Alan insisted on the importance of adhering to the community guidelines. You did not follow the rules, and I don't need to make an exception for you, Karen, he shouted. However, Karen remained steadfast asserting her supposed authority. Frustrated, Alan grabbed the sign out of the ground and returned it to her, his stern gaze fixed on her defiant eyes. Karen, seething with anger, retaliated by placing the sign back on Alan's yard once he had retreated into his home. Leave it there, she shouted at him. Watching from the window, Alan couldn't believe the audacity of his neighbor. Anger fueled determination, and he emerged from his house, his military instincts kicking in. This was her final warning, or he would call the authorities. In a calm but stern voice, Alan addressed Karen. Karen, I won't tolerate trespassing on my property. I'm an ex-military officer, and I won't hesitate to protect what's mine. Remove the sign immediately. He stepped off the porch and picked up his shirt, revealing a 9mm pistol. It is a licensed firearm and I am not afraid to use it. He warned her. Karen scoffed, thinking it was an empty threat. But Alan held the gun in his hand, a relic from his military days. He showed off its gleaming silver barrel. The gravity of the situation sank in for Karen as Alan stood firm, ready to defend his property. Would she leave his property alone now that she knew who he was? Alan told her how many people he killed in his line of work over the years. You're crossing a line, Karen. This is my home, and I won't allow you to disrespect it, Alan declared. Smirking, Karen straightened up and declared. I happen to be the HOE president, Alan. I know the rules better than anyone, and I have every right to put this sign here. You can't do anything to me, she laughed. A fiery exchange of words followed, with Karen insisting on her authority and Alan challenging her actions. I'm warning you, the next time won't be pretty, he said. As Alan retreated into his home, he watched through the window as Karen, a smug expression on her face, planted the sign right back on his lawn. Enough was enough. Alan emerged from his house, his military background evident in the way he carried himself. This is your last chance, Karen, he said. Another neighbor stepped outside to watch the commotion. Alan's hand gripped a concealed firearm, his eyes steely and resolute. Karen, he said, his voice steady. I don't take trespassing lightly. Remove the sign. He cocked his gun and shot at the ground just next to her feet. Startled, Karen hesitated for a moment before complying, a glint of fear in her eyes. Alan didn't back down. I'm not afraid to protect my property, Karen. Remember that. He put his gun away and nodded at the neighbor who was staring at him. Alan knew that now he would be respected in his community. Nobody was going to mess with him now. With reluctance, Karen snatched the sign from the ground and retreated to her own property. This won't be the last you hear from me, Alan. She screamed. Alan, maintaining his composure, watched her leave, his eyes unwavering. The confrontation left the neighborhood buzzing with speculation. He had a feeling that he was going to be the talk of the town over the next few days. Later that day, as Alan calmed down, he wondered who was truly behind this ordeal. His anger simmered, and he resolved to find the mysterious culprit who had orchestrated this bizarre situation. He sat at his laptop to do some research on the HOA board. Determined, he began his quest to uncover the truth, vowing to bring justice to his disrupted suburban peace. What would the ex-soldier uncover? The next day, Alan woke to find Karen's house empty. 
He took a quick stroll down the road to check if she had placed her sign board anywhere else, but she didn't. Confused neighbors whispered about her abrupt departure overnight. Alan's phone buzzed, and a message from the HOA board caught his attention they were taking nominations for a new president. Alan felt his heart sink slightly. He didn't like hurting people, but he also didn't like being taken advantage of. He had to take a stand for his property and privacy. The neighborhood was about to witness a new era, and Alan, fueled by a desire for fairness, contemplated stepping up to bring change to their community. Would he be the next HOA president?